Bangkok Rugby 2015 and you're watching Rugby Asia Channel. Welcome back to the Rugby Asia Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Eddie Evans, who's the founder, director, producer. What else? Uh, player. Player. Volunteer. Volunteer. Worker. Musician. Musician. You gotta get your hands dirty. You gotta get your hands dirty out here. We're, uh, we, it's all in, it's, you're all in for everything here. Mate, it's been 10 years, 10 long years. 10 long years. Let's talk about uh, the inception of, of the Bangkok International Tents up until now and how it's changed over the years. Sure, yeah, I mean, the, from the concept, early days, I mean, it was just an idea over a couple of pints, thinking, you know, Bangkok, obviously a great location. Rugby is quite popular in the region. Um, and tens, it's just the ultimate uh, uh, social sport, really, you know, and anybody can really have a run. Um, so we thought, you know what, let's let's do something. Let's let's mix those and, and bring it to Bangkok. And we started the first year, and actually, there, I don't think we even had grass on the field. We had the crappiest field you could ever imagine. But all the boys showed up. We had about 16 teams that first year. We call it the Dust Bowl because there was just a haze of, of, uh, of dust and dirt and everything. But now here we are in the 10th year, and we got you know probably about two or three thousand people down here today. It's yep, nice, yep. yeah. Sure. Okay, last last question, mate. Um, you've already done 10 years now. Hmm. What would you like to see in the next five years? with the Bangkok international teams? Yeah, um, I, I just think, you know, there's not so much. We've, we, we've come as good as I think we want to get it in terms of professionalism and, and, and the profile of it. It's a club players tournament. It's a social tournament. And that's what actually our goal is to maintain that, that atmosphere. And guys can come here and have a good time and, and play some rugby and then not worry too much about, you know, too much hard rugby, right? They can spend it time in the beer garden, they can have fun, and they're not worried about having a bit of a trot in the field. So, yeah, that's probably just maintain that social level. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it first from the man, Eddie Evans, the legend of the Bangkok International Teens. Uh, yeah, I'm here for a couple of reasons. One, I'm doing a big piece for Rugby World magazine, which is the biggest selling magazine in the world, based in England. And also. How big? 300, 400,000 people, I think, read it. So it's a pretty big magazine, pretty authoritative. So they were very interested in the whole charity and obviously Bobby Skinstad, Eddie Evans and Dave Scully here. So peace for them. And then obviously with a big Japanese interest here. So I'm doing some pieces for Rugby News Japan and Kyoto News as well. Tell us a little bit more about what you do back in Japan. Basically, I cover the rugby there. Obviously, I've been doing it for about 16 years now. Um, so before the top league even started. And in those years, the level's gone up. There are more and more foreigners coming in. We've had legends like John Kerr and Eddie Jones coaching the national team. And there's a lot of interest overseas in, in what happens in Japanese rugby as we head to the World Cup in 2019. Yep. Uh, a couple of things. I've started up a website, Rugby News Japan. Um, also, the company I work for mainly, Kyoto News, is a big Japanese news agency. So we send stories out overseas. And uh, I'm also in the wide world of Twitter now, Freeman Rugby Jap which is probably not politically correct, but I ran out of letters at the end and I should have got the Japan. Come along here, down on your screen. Freeman, so Freeman Rugby Jap, and then Rugby News Japan on Facebook and also on the website as well. So uh, yeah, one of the things we've got this year, a couple of old faces that I haven't seen for many years playing over here. So we're gonna start a where are they now? So any requests about you know what the players are doing who were in Japan years ago, then let me know. You heard it here first from the number one authority in Japanese rugby, Rich Freeman. Rich, thanks for joining us, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much for having me. How was it being playing, you know, going from international level and then just kind of like winding up and playing this kind of social yeah. level, you know, that everyone, all internationals and former rugby players kind of go through, you know? Yeah, you do, you know. You, you retire and you, you sort of hang the boots up and there's so much of the game you miss. And I think... This is great. This ticks all the boxes because when you when you get into a competition like this, and it's always it's all about the rugby, the mates, and all that. And everyone comes in from everywhere. It's catch up footy off the field, and then you know you do put a bit of rugby in there, and you do put a bit of stuff on the field, and there's a bit of magic, less and less every year. But um, it just ticks all the boxes, mate. And it's what and congratulations, Eddie Evans, because it really is what rugby should be and should remain about in an era when it's professional. Yeah. And I think some of this stuff gets lost. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you know, it maintains the integrity of the game places like this and you see you know these girls playing touch and the young blokes playing the rugby and and you can see the game and the spirit of the game still alive at the grassroots level yeah. um, and it's nice for a few old farts like us to tap into <laughs> that and remember why we play and remember why we retired. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rugby Edge Channel show I'm here with David Ithaca who's the general manager for the Hilton and Doubletree Hilton. David welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Mate, so uh, tell us a little bit more about your involvement with the uh, the Bangkok International Tens. 
Um, we have been, we have, we opened since a couple of years ago. Yep. And since we opened, we have been working with ARC. And uh, all this event is supporting kids and is supporting ARC. So they call us and uh, here we are. Yeah. And so you're, you're enjoying your time here with, and also enjoying the rugby experience? I think it's, it's a great thing. It's family, it's a sport, it's fun. Uh, what else can you ask? All right, so I understand that you've done a lot of work with the community lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, at Christmas, but we did, uh, we did a Christmas trip. It was made by, by teddy bears, 400 teddy bears. And uh, we were teddy bears that were the Hilton chef, the waiter, the bellboy, and the guests. Uh, we sold the teddy bears at uh, 600 baht, and the money we raised was to work for the kids. It was such a big success that we have to do two trees. So at the end, was the, we sold 800 teddy bears. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, good work. Excellent. All right, so we're currently staying at the Double Trees, uh, so I want to thank you for looking after us. Um, if people want to come over and stay, what, is there a website that they can have a look at? Or? Yeah, the best. Um, uh, we have the Hilton and the Double Tree in, in Sukumbid area, which is in the very, very city centre of uh, Bangkok. And then they can find it in Hilton.com and they look for... Along the bottom of your screen right here? And then you look for the Hilton Sukumbid and the Double Tree by Hilton Sukumbid. Yep. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for speaking to us. Big pleasure. And also thank you for looking after us. And, All right. Uh, th thanks for coming, being part of the event. No worries. It's David, everybody. Jingle manager. Woohoo! Thanks. You know what? Rugby is neat, and today's actually my first opportunity to really enjoy the sport. So I was kind of getting the 101 from some of the guys that we have here playing today, and, and I've come to learn a lot about it in the short time. So I, I'm enjoying it and, and learning as I go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Springbok legend Bobby Skinstad, or Bob for short. All right, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, bud. Good to be here. Can you tell us your involvement with the, the Jam Boys? Yeah, well, <clears throat> listen to my voice. I'm, I'm, I'm Minister of Fun and Games. Now, I, I met Eddie Evans about 10 years ago, and, and he said, come out and play the tournament. We've been playing ever since. We just have so much fun here. Raise a bit of money, meet the kids who, who Eddie raises the money for, and yeah. just try and spread the love of rugby around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the founder, the president, the prime minister, the big boss, the main man, the last dragon of the Jam Boys rugby team. So bro, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, the privilege, uh, absolute privilege to be here. Ronnie, can you tell us about how you first came up with the, with the idea of the Jam Boys? Um, yeah, I think it pretty much comes down to, um, I had the privilege of living in Asia, in Asia for a while before the Bangkok 10s became reality. And, um, and so when Eddie came up with the idea of starting the Bangkok 10s, so we thought, let's, let's, let's put some feeders out to our friends and, uh, and really, create a team that they can have a chance to experience a social rugby. It will be brief because I, as I say, I'm, I'm, um, the 10th year and it's, it's just grown and developed, you know, over 1,800 participants now and um, we've seen the tournament grow from what 12 teams of what it was and, and when we first started um, this tournament and Eddie had the vision and he wanted it to grow and develop as it has, but so we played on a, a bowl, well there was no grass basically and it was an awful field and it was just one pitch and as I say with only 12 teams and so yeah, it's, it's changed, it's developed. The charity of choice is Naksu. It's, it's something that you've you've covered and you've spoken to the members and, and kids. And you know, if we can change one kid's life, then we change a, a community. And in time, we change a nation. And that's what we're about. Well, that's it from us here at the Rugby Edge Channel. What an amazing weekend that we've had so far. We want to thank all the teams who took part in this event. We want to thank Eddie Evans, especially. Congratulations for your 10th anniversary of the Bangkok International Tents. And also a special shout out to the Double Tree by the Hilton for putting us up for the weekend. Thank you very much. That's the outro. See you later. Well, thank you for your time, bro. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It was good to see you. New Zealand legend, Jonah Lomu. Thanks, Jonah. <laughs> All right, and I also understand you've come a long way. Uh, tell us about that. I have. I have just a few short days on the ground, just about a week, um, in from Texas. That's where all my exes live. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rugby Asia channel. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're doing what you did last year. And then the chicken said, you can only lay one egg at a time. Yeah? Yeah? No? <laughs> and also for the double tree, All right. And want to thank Hooters. 